welcome to our channel. We're the Simple Teachers. Today we have a video for you of how to prepare or plan your tier two instruction. Yeah, tier two instruction is an important piece of our day. Uh, a lot of research has shown that good instruction, effective instruction can overcome variables such as low socioeconomic status or even language barriers. So we are here to explain how we can overcome some of those barriers and one of the best ways, one of the most effective ways is through delivering instruction in the multi-tiered system. multi-tiered system, RTI or MTSS. So if you haven't watched our video we released about what is RTI or MTSS, you'll want to make sure to go watch that. I have the link in the description, so go do that now. But just to recap it, if we visualize the triangle, we've got tier one taking up the most chunk of that triangle. It's where we spend most of our time. It's whole group instruction delivering our scope and sequence, our main reading instruction, all of the components to all of our students in tier one instruction. If we taught well, if our instruction was effective, we will reach about 80% of our students with 80% uh, proficiency. So those students who need a second dose need tier two instruction, and that's where we're gonna live in this video. So tier two instruction is making sure those students who need retaught don't get left behind, right? So we need to reteach them in that tier two instruction. And then, so the top part of the triangle is that tier two, but then we've got tier three as well. There still will be a small amount of students, three to 5% who need additional intervention, mm -hmm. filling in a gap, a hole, something else they need to be proficient. Yeah, and when we deliver effective instruction within those three tiers, our, our triangle, our classroom will look like this, our data. Mm -hmm. When we deliver effective instruction, our data will be a predictor or an outcome for us to know, yeah. hey, I did a good job because it looks like that. It's such a good self-reflection tool that I'm yeah. always thinking of. Does, yeah. it, does my data look like this or like yeah. this? If it's looking like this, there's a problem. There's a big problem. And the thing that's happening uh, in a lot of schools, a lot of areas, districts, sometimes even you know, statewide, is our data is starting to look more like a square. Mm. And that can happen when we focus too much on the interventions and not enough on Tier 1. Or it can happen if we're not delivering highly effective instruction. So we really want to just say it again, we've got to deliver very effective tier one instruction first. Yeah. But we're gonna focus on tier two, tier today. two today. So K12, you we started off. Yeah. So K tier one, tier two on what's needed, and tier three if needed. Yeah. First grade, same thing. Yeah. Tier one strong intervene on those things you taught in first grade, tier two. Mm -hmm. So then by second grade, same thing. And we just continue that pattern. Yeah. So it doesn't become that square, square or the triangle have, reversed. <laughs> yeah, we want to, it to look like this, not like this, mm -hmm. and for sure not upside down. Absolutely. Yeah. So our data is a reflection of really what we're doing. Yeah. All right. So on to tier two instruction. We want to use our data, of course, to determine who we're going to provide this intervention for. And also we're going to get a little more data to determine what type of instruction we're going to use. We, of course, are going to teach you to use the components of reading just Yay. like we do with Tier 1. Yeah. So if you're not doing your Tier 1 instruction linked to the components of reading, you're going to want to do that first. The components of reading being, I'll just state the main ones, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, which then gets you into comprehension. Mm -hmm. So those are the main guys. So if we're not teaching those in tier one, this video will be very hard yeah. for your tier two instruction. It will, <laughs> yes. 
So we've got to get our tier one aligned to those and then we can align our tier two to those as well. It's just much easier to plan your instruction based on those reading components mm -hmm. because your kids are going to have issues within a specific component, most likely. And then those components, they lead to, you, you, you kind of patch up one and then you move on to the next one and move on to the yeah. next one in your interventions. So here we are, we're in tier two, we have these kids that we know who they are, the 20% that didn't quite get it with our tier one instruction, it. Uh, we have to use a little bit of either teacher knowledge, whether it's observation from tier one, our formative assessment from tier one, maybe our summative assessment from tier one, or some diagnostic data. We're going to use that data to analyze what it is they need. Mm -hmm. And then once we've analyzed what they need, we're going to separate these this 20% into our small groups. So we have done a little um, separation of some groups here to kind of walk you through what groups might look like and then we'll kind of talk through what we might do with these students in a tier two situation. Exactly, and what Angie is talking about is called the problem solving method. Yes. And it's highly effective. Absolutely. So when we know who in our class needs that tier two intervention, we just wrote this up. It is an example. It is just a possible. Yep. So let's say we need at one group that they need a phonics intervention. How might we know they need a phonics intervention? As we're teaching or listening to them read, they're struggling with decoding words. They come across a lot. They have to stop and blend a lot of words mm -hmm. or they still don't quite have their sound spelling pattern that you're teaching that yep. week their accuracy is still low in progress monitoring. I mean, there's a lot of ways that we can see that, but you're going to see it in accuracy on a progress monitor for sure. Yeah, so these kids need a, a phonics intervention. One way to do that is to just reteach your week's spelling, sound spelling focus. So if I have the sound spelling focus of the sound O and its spellings, I'm going to reteach that and make sure you get into text reading. So an example would look just like my tier one instruction phonics lesson. I could even use the same text. Maybe I have a different text, um, just depending on what resources you have. Give another phonics lesson with that long O focus or whatever your sound spelling focus was for the week. Yeah. You could also give a phonics intervention on multisyllabic word reading. Yes. If they know all their sounds and spellings and it's those multi-slavic words, that could be a very effective phonics intervention. Yep. Getting into text reading. And that's easy. Just use your main selection or any text you're using in class. Yeah. Every text that you're reading likely has those multi-slavic words. So we have one group written with a phonics intervention, but yep. Whitney actually talked about two phonics intervention groups that you could have. Exactly. So maybe it's a sound spelling phonics intervention, but maybe it's a multi-slavic word reading. Mm -hmm. So another group idea could be students who maybe are accurate readers, but they're not reading with fluency. Maybe their rate is not where it should be. Maybe their voice is not mm -hmm. sounding nice at all, which can have huge impact on comprehension. Mm -hmm. And so they might need a fluency intervention. Now, if you're not teaching a prosody fluency focus lesson, this would be hard to do. Get Make sure you're teaching it in your tier one. So then in your tier two, you're gonna reteach whatever prosody you've been teaching in tier one using text reading. Reuse your main selection, reuse text. Maybe you want to give a fluency intervention using your decodable from your phonics lesson. Sure. Just make sure you get that prosody, practice, fluency intervention in text reading. Yep. Fluency intervention and the practice of reading text using a prosody element is really the only place that we have to really match the level of a text to mm -hmm. their independent reading level. Other than that, because you're there, you can, yeah. you can assist them to yeah. read a text that's a little hard. But in this particular intervention is really the only place that that text has to be kind of easy. Because you don't want them to have to decode a lot of words. You want them to be able to just read it sounding smoothly, practicing mm -hmm. that prosody element. Other than that, I'm, I'm not really 
super nervous about giving kids texts that are a little harder for them. Yeah. That's the only place that I'm like, oh, be, be pretty picky. It's got to be either something they're familiar with. Uh -huh. or, Re-reads are an excellent yeah, choice. Yeah, it's Or something easy that you them. know they'll be easy. Yep. Okay, so that's fluency intervention choice. We could also, let's say you have a different group that needs a comprehension intervention. They're accurate readers. They sound nice when they read. Their rates appropriate where it should be. Make sure you're looking at those benchmarks. Mm -hmm. um, but they need a comprehension intervention. And so whatever strategies you've been teaching in class for your comprehension instruction lessons, you would then reteach those in your tier two instruction. So and when Angie and I were talking about this, sometimes I don't start my comprehension intervention on a Monday because I would have just started a new strategy on Monday. Yeah. So we may be continuing a text from the prior week and then maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, we might reread maybe our main selection and redo a sh that same strategy so that's a way, or choose a different text and use that same strategy yeah. that you've been teaching in class. So yep. we just have to be flexible with our plans as well. Yeah, tier two kind of follows behind your tier one. It has to follow behind mm -hmm. it. So when we come to a Friday, it has to follow behind, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing we've been doing this year is typing up the text from mm. our big books. We have a lot of big books in the program we're using right now. So yeah. typing up the text has been a great option for tier two when we're not in the main selection. So you'll see my students bring over their main selection text, but if it's a text not from the main selection, typing up our big book text has been a really good addition to my classroom this year. It's a great idea, very good idea. Now in comprehension instruction, you could also have two different groups that need a comprehension intervention, a group that's um, at a higher reading level than another group, and you would just give a different text, different um, interest, different text difficulty, yeah. different complexity is the word I like to use. So you keep the strategy similar because that's, you want to align it to yeah. your tier one, but you're going to give them different texts. Absolutely. So one group that we didn't put on here, mainly because yeah. we ran out of space, but yeah. you could add a vocabulary intervention if needed as well. So don't forget about that. Yeah. And when I used to do vocabulary intervention, I actually would have my ESL um, teacher in the building mm -hmm. preload the week's vocabulary a week before so she would awesome. preload on like thursday friday for me on monday tuesday and then so they're would, ready to read yes, that main selection yeah awesome mm -hmm. and that was my intervention and so i handed that to her which brings me to the other thing that teachers often run into is what if i can't always deliver the intervention and i have to hand an intervention to someone how do i choose what to do which ones are mm -hmm. the better choice to hand over to someone else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we always want to make sure that the well, most qualified teacher or person is giving the most needed intervention to mm -hmm. those students because like, these are struggling students in a struggling area. We want to make sure the most qualified person is delivering that intervention, which most cases would be you. Mm -hmm. as the classroom teacher and you know them you know what you taught so you can align to your tier one but when you do have to hand an intervention to someone else a uh, vocabulary is good you can you know align that hand the core reading program vocabulary to them and that's pretty easy to hand over fluency is also an easy one to hand to someone else because all they have to do is have the kids read and then they give feedback on the prosody element that you're teaching. And we have an awesome download of fluency resources mm. that would give them teacher language. We have yeah. posters, even a rubric. So yeah. you could just print that out and give that to them. As yeah. Well. Those are probably the easiest mm -hmm. two. Skills in the lower grades, like alphabet, knowledge, letter names, and sounds. Those are really easy yeah. to hand over. Um, phonics and phonemic awareness can be taught. They need to be taught well, 
I mean, I had a lot of success teaching a lot of uh, paras and interventionists to do phonics lessons well. I took a lot of time to teach them how to how do to those, mm -hmm. but they became very proficient at them and did a great job. So I dare say that they absolutely can learn to do those, no yeah. problem. But comprehension, hmm, I don't think I would hand that over to anyone because they're pretty difficult you know, to turn over the thinking that goes behind what you do in a comprehension lesson to someone who isn't trained as the classroom teacher, I, I probably wouldn't do that. Well, and just think of the planning that goes mm -hmm. behind a yeah. comprehension lesson. We can't put that expectation on no. someone else to do. No. And a lot of our feedback from comprehension lessons is in the moment through discussion. Yep. So if we're not there with them, it's really hard for us to assess how they're doing. Absolutely. Um, so to get a good measure on how they're comprehending, that's hard if it's not us. Yeah, I probably would, wouldn't recommend handing comprehension interventions yeah, to anybody that else. That makes sense. Yeah. So the other thing that I think people ask me a lot about is what about guided reading? Um, Cause I don't really do guided reading as guided reading was created the method of guided reading because I teach to the components and I teach effective instruction within the components. Um, guided reading would best fit in comprehension instruction, but it's not strategy driven. It's not, um, the strategy instruction that I like to use and teach. So, I mean, I don't really do guided reading as it was created. Mm -hmm. um, there you have it. It's probably one of the most common questions I get if people mm -hmm. come and observe me in my classroom is they ask, how, what are you doing in your small groups? Are you doing guided reading or not? Yeah. And I say, we're reading. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah. with an um, specific strategy focus within the reading components. Yeah. So there's a big difference. Yeah. But we're, we're reading. Yeah. Because the point of tier two is to dig in problem solving mm -hmm. method and solving a problem mm -hmm. so they can fix that problem and then go about so that we keep our classroom data in check, yeah. right? We've got mm -hmm. to keep at least 80% of our students proficient. Mm -hmm. So, and this will help us immensely with that. Mm -hmm. It is It is different. It is a change mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But MTSS, RTI has a 1.06 effect size. I mean, that's Huge. almost three years <laughs> growth that's crazy yeah we can't ignore it we can't turn our backs on it and within that model it we have to use the problem solving model which focuses in on mm. specific interventions and so in order to get the effect size out of the model we have to do all the pieces yeah so let's say you're feeling whoa i'm not doing mm. any of this where might be a good place to start? Tier one. Yeah. Tier one, that's the best, most important place. Yeah. So make sure your tier one, like we mentioned at the beginning of this video, you're teaching the reading components through strategies. Our phonics lessons are strategy based because we're teaching them how to decode words. We can go through all of the elements, but they're all strategy based. Yeah. We're teaching them how to do the thinking on their own through the reading components then we can intervene on those reading components because we've taught them tier one. Yeah. Yep. And once you do it, it's, it's actually quite simple. Oh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it took me a couple years to get this way. And I swear each year, I feel like my planning gets easier because I've had more practice with it. It just becomes more natural. Yeah. It, it's awesome. I, yeah. I love it. And you can look at your core reading program and instead of confusion, as you turn the pages, you just see the pieces that fit within the components yes. and where they belong. Yep. 
I don't know. And it's, it's like a it, map. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It you. It just. It's like it. It decodes the mess of the core reading program <laughs> for does. you. So check out our tier one planning pages because that is has been such an effective tool for me to use planning my tier one because then that's going to guide right into the tier two that I know I'm going to need yeah. with those 20% of my kids. Yeah. So. And if we have any kids left that need tier three, we're going to spend actually the least amount of time mm -hmm. intervening with them. I know it seems like that's not right. We've already spent a lot of time with them tier one and tier two. So now the tier three time that we spend with them is going to be just another little tiny dose of something. Um, I remember an intervention I did for tier three was I had on a hanging lanyard uh, some cards. I had a student in third grade that still didn't know some letter names and sounds, and I kept those letter names or letters on cards on my neck lanyard. And as we're walking down the hall, I'd be like, what's his name? Name. Sound. I'm glad you Name. said that because we don't have time to oh. build another rotation in your small yeah. group time for a tier three. I mean, goodness, I'd love to hear if you do have time. Yeah. So that is such a great example of how to get that tier three and tier two should be super structured small yeah. group. And if you have that opportunity in tier three, great, mm -hmm. but most likely we probably don't. Yep. So that is a fabulous example of how to get that tier three in. Yeah, we'd stand in line. I'd, I'd put words. I mean, any few minutes that you can grab, you're cognizant of what they need, uh -huh. and you just find those few minutes here and there throughout the day. Those little holes. Yep, little holes. That's exactly what those are in tier three, and likely those are going to be your kids that have a true learning disability. That's the one thing that RTI does is it points out the kids that have the true learning disabilities for you, and you're able to see what those are, and then you're able to track their data and get them into if they aren't already into special ed and get them the help they need to help with their learning disabilities. It's a great system. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, good luck with your tier two instruction. Leave a question. If you would like more support, we would love to help you out. Make sure you check out all the links I've put in the description. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Like this video. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep putting some more content on here. Thank you. Simply teach.